The most active stretch in the tropics we've seen so far this year likely coming, but be careful what you're looking at on social media. We're going to break all that down. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegg is back with you. In this video, we're going to talk about up first, the Caribbean getting into next week. But then as we slide into October, big time development still going to be possible in the main development region off of Africa. So we're going to take a look at that. And then, of course, we're going to break down a bunch of ensembles going forward. If you're interested in getting the scientific and meteorological information to help you can make uh, decisions into what could be coming your direction, you've come to the right place. We break it down with sound science and meteorology. Please hit that subscribe button and we will keep you posted throughout the rest of the hurricane season and as we venture into winter. All right, so right off the bat, hot off the press, the Climate Prediction Center puts these out every single week. And we've been talking about this area in the Caribbean for about two weeks now. The signal has been that strong. The environment hasn't looked that favorable that it appears that during the week of September 25th through October 1st, there could be some development and likely will be in the Western Caribbean. So you see here the Climate Prediction Center giving that a greater than 60% chance for some development in this region, the extreme Western Caribbean towards the Yucatan, Western Cuba. And then where it goes from there is going to be the question. It does look like it's going to lift north. We don't know the strength. We don't know exactly where or when that's going to happen. We don't have a storm just yet. Just know that really anybody from eastern Mexico to the eastern Gulf of Mexico is going to be under the gun. I would slightly favor the eastern Gulf at this point. But again, a lot of steering things have to come into play. We're going to break that down with some of the ensembles. Then we also have a medium to high chance for more development in the main development region. Again, we're going to break that down with ensembles coming up in just a couple of minutes. First, though, I do want to continue to show you what the deal is and why uh, we're going to be extra concerned here going forward. And it's the fact there's a byproduct of the quiet stretch that the Atlantic has gone through. Uh, you measure a season, season in both quantity and quality. Uh, we've had the, qual the quality of the storms, not so much the quantity, thankfully, but when there's lower storms out there, lesser storms out there, they're not really sucking up all the heat content that the ocean has to offer. So this is the tropical fuel. It's measuring not only how warm the sea surface temperature is, but how deep that warm water goes. And the deeper the warmth goes, the darker the red and purple this is. And we have extreme fuel in the Western Caribbean. And then there's that loop current. You see that red turn orange here. Uh, when storms go over that, they typically rapidly intensify given other environmental uh, factors like wind shear. So if there's wind shear around, that wouldn't happen. But I'm going to show you in the upper level pattern that it's likely going to be an extremely favorable environment. But really all throughout the Atlantic, that dark red that goes up the eastern seaboard, that is the Gulf Stream. You can clearly see that. But all the way back east of the Caribbean, still just insane amounts of fuel for these storms to work with. So that's something that we're going to be watching going forward. So taking this down to the Caribbean level here, we're really focused on the Western Caribbean east of Central America, east of the Yucatan, and then west of Cuba for the thunderstorms to really to try to consolidate. We're going to break the upper level pattern down in just one second, but we're really looking for September 23rd through the September through September 26th. That is going to be that time frame where we're going to start to see the uptick, or at least the makings of that system. Where it goes from there, how strong it can get, that's the stuff that is in question, and that's where I'm going to go on my soapbox that Pay attention, if you do like following these things, to the ensemble forecast and not so much the individual GFS or the European or whatever you may look at because there's no doubt going to be windshield wiper effect in both intensity and location. With no storm, there's nothing for the model guidance to grab onto. So that's why ensembles are extremely important. And again, we're going to uh, break that down in just one second. Um, we can actually do that right now because I do, I do want to show you where they kind of are. And then we're going to get into some of the uh, environmental factors. So first, we're going to start off with the GFS, uh, uh, the European ensembles, excuse me. And this is kind of the basin wide look, but where you see the yellow pop up, that's where you start to have the 
anomalies, the higher agreement in the ensemble. So what the ensembles are is there are different initial conditions put into those things. When we don't have a lot of information, we can tweak it so that if we start to see things converge on a solution without having a lot of that uh, a lot of that data available because we don't have a storm, it starts to give you a little more confidence in the overall long range forecast. That is why ensemble forecasting is so important. So you see here, this is Tuesday, September 24th, and look at all the numbers, those little red numbers, by the way, that's the pressure. Um, but you see here the highlight, especially in the eastern side. There are a few members that go to the western uh, gulf in the Bay of Campeche. I'll show you why in one second. But there's certainly an overwhelming signal here uh, for the eastern gulf and the Cuba area, maybe as far to the east as the Bahamas, as being a spot to really pay attention to. And you saw that on the Climate Prediction Center map with those higher features. Also, you'll notice out here, where you see my mouse in the main development region, that is where we have another potential area to watch. And you saw that highlighted on the chart that I showed you earlier. And that could end up leading to a couple things. We have one out here and then one out here. So after a super quiet stretch, and you're going to hear me say this a lot going forward, it's almost like the end of September to October this year anyway, is like the new August to September uh, because of the factors that we've highlighted a lot over the past few weeks that have kind of been keeping it at bay. I want to show you the GFS ensembles. Uh, these have been showing potential development for about two weeks. I'll show you the, the reason why in just one second. I know I'm kind of bouncing around. We're going to go back to the Caribbean in just one second to do a little more uh, high-level breakdown, but this has been showing it for two weeks. We've talked about this for the last couple of weeks. Again, in a way where I don't want to get anybody in a tizzy, uh, everybody at this point should just make sure that your hurricane kits are in order um, because what I can tell you is I have high confidence that there's going to be a storm develop. The low confidence at this point, we're nine to 10 days away as of September 17th from any kind of potential land interaction or maybe seven to 10 days. Um, no one knows, no model knows who are going to have the highest impacts with this storm. So that's important to know, and that's why I always caution looking at the different model runs that are just plastic for clicks out there. You need to have some context. And that's what I hope that you get from watching this channel. That's why this channel's here, and that's why I hope that you enjoy the content that comes out of this. And if you are enjoying it, shameless plug, hit that subscribe button. All right, so you see it right here. There are the members, and the GFS has been bullish on this for the last two weeks, and it continues to highlight the eastern Gulf, western Cuba, maybe the Bahamas, and then maybe riding up the eastern seaboard. There are a few members. You see a decent signal here still in the western Gulf. I'll show you why that is in just one second. And then there uh, we go with more members on board with a uh, system developing off the coast of Africa. That's going to be the weird thing going forward. We talked about some of the factors, the intertropical convergence zone being way too far north giving the Sahara Desert tons of rain, like crazy rain events. Um, that looks to be changing, and it's going to be something to watch if we get a September-like main development region storms in the month of October. That remains to be seen. All right, before we get back to the Caribbean, if you're still with me, give me a thumbs up. Post in the comments where you're tuning in from. I want to show you the reason, because I... I gripe on this all the time and get up on my soapbox all the time that if you don't have context, models are worthless. And if you're looking long range and just plastering models, that's worthless. A lot of times these models give us these phantom storms. I don't believe this is it because of this, the Madden-Julian oscillation. So what we're looking at here is the darker the green, the bigger the anomaly of rising motion. When air rises, it cools, condenses, you get thunderstorms to develop, okay? Watch what happens. It's over in the Eastern Pacific, so I do think we're also going to have something develop in the Eastern Pacific. Probably won't impact land. Look at that. That's going forward in time through October 1st. Bullseye over the Atlantic Basin. That's about as big a signal as you are going to see, and that is why I think, anyway, tropical activity is going to explode in the Atlantic Basin over the next month that we might try to catch up on a lot of those storms 
uh, that have been held back over the next four-ish weeks. And then we'll have another shot in November in the Caribbean um, as well. But the next four weeks could be a little rough. We talked before the season started, and I, and I do believe the one part of the forecast that is working out is the high-impact nature of these storms. We've had a ton of landfalls already this year. Uh, there's going to be a likely new landfall coming. Again, the location and the strength of that is still yet to be determined. But as you roll through the first week of October, that's through October 8th, we still have the green around. And then still over Africa, we have rising motion around. So really through October 15th, maybe through the 20th, um, we're going to have a pretty decent shot for tropical development in the main development region and again in the Caribbean. All right, so what I want to do now is I'm going to go back to my other weather computer and I want to show you just one of uh, the models here. This is going to be the GFS spin and just to kind of show you what we're looking at. Now this is through next Tuesday and you see here the white lines and the arrows. That's the wind at the surface. So you see some of that spin right there and then the colors are the mid to upper level spin of the model. Uh, the darker the colors there, the more aggressive the spin. So by next Tuesday, we're looking at the GFS anyway, picking up on something trying to develop right around the Cayman Islands, Western Caribbean, uh, well west of Jamaica, somewhere toward the Yucatan Channel, uh, northeast of Honduras and Nicaragua, Belize. We're going to be watching that closely because, again, I'm pretty confident that there's going to be a storm. MJO is one of those reasons why. And this is going to be another reason why. Um and I, I think this is really going to be the thing that we watch going forward. There's going to be a pretty big upper level dip in the jet stream coming through. So you see that highlighted right in through here. Okay, I, I have the blue arrows. I'm going to draw right on the screen right there. So that is our upper level. That's our jet stream, okay? When that dips over the warmer waters, that's going to help to force up thunderstorms. And the colors you see here, that's the simulated infrared satellite. So the brighter the colors, the cooler the cloud tops, the more intense the thunderstorm activity. So not only do we have the forcing from the Madden-Julian oscillation, that big thing that kind of goes across the globe 30 to 60 days, give or take, and helps to force up thunderstorms, we also have this. So there's two things that are going to work in favor here uh, for tropical development. All right, so let's go out into the future now a little bit further, um, and then you see kind of what happens a little bit. Now, that area of low pressure, we have a kind of retrograding back into Mexico, and that kind of went over Florida. So let me back this up a little bit, and let's take this forward. And as we go deeper in time you're going to notice that we have a couple of things going on. Um, notice this is the, the white lines in this example are the upper level winds. So there's really not a ton of organization here in this rendition yet as of next Friday. So this is next Friday, not this upcoming Friday. Um, but notice the clockwise flow. On top of that developing storm, we have high pressure developing in the upper levels of the atmosphere. That is a calling card for a very good environment for the storm, not for us. So I want to be clear about that, not rooting for this. We want to try to get through the rest of the season unscathed. Um, but at this stage in the game, it's impossible to say where it's going. It's impossible to know how strong it's going to be because there are little nuances. And certainly as we found out with Ernesto and with Debbie, uh, holding back Debbie's rapid intensification, thankfully. The deal, though, that we can look at now is the synoptic scale environment, that large scale environment. And we already have favorability from the MJO passing through. We have that upper level trough that I just showed you, the dip in the jet stream. And we have high pressure developing in the central and western Caribbean, which will help the storm breathe. I showed you the ocean heat content and, and kind of stir it all together. And it's kind of a recipe for something to develop down there. So I'm confident that there's going to be a storm in the Western Caribbean next week and getting into next weekend. It's just, where does it go? I would favor the Eastern Gulf, maybe Western Cuba as well, maybe the Bahamas at this point, but it all kind of depends on where this part, where this piece back here. So you can kind of see where I'm, where I'm drawing. That's where that initial trough kind of pinches off. If the storm develops quick enough, it might pull it over the Yucatan and then send it towards eastern Mexico or, or eastern Texas. So 
the west side of the Gulf is still in play. I would just favor, at this point anyway, the eastern Gulf, but way too early to tell. Alrighty, guys. Hey, you may have noticed as well that we've got a new little setup. That's something we've been working on for the past couple of weeks. Uh, brand new streaming room, state-of-the-art technology, so we can bring you the best weather coverage on YouTube, on the internet. Um, we're going to show you more of this as we uh, get everything into, into fruition, but that's been one of the reasons why there hasn't been a ton of video content lately, but we are going to ramp up the video content for you so that you can stay up to date, so that you can learn something, and if you're interested in the science and meteorology of it and not some of the scare tactics that are out there, uh, the thumbnails are getting crazy, by the way. Um, just because you're going to storm doesn't mean it's going to be like Cat 5. And I've seen that out there. So a caution again, be careful what you look for or what you see out there. Make sure you know your source. That's what, um, that's what my hope is. And uh, again, we're in a wait and see period right now. This is still nine-ish days out. And it's crazy that we're talking about it, but it's out there. And I wanted to give you guys the best information that I can give you um, so that you know what to look for. And we can kind of watch this together as we go forward. Thank you guys a ton for tuning in. I hope you found this video helpful and all the content that we've made. Thank you so much for being here in this growing weather community. If this is your first time finding the video and you want to hang out with us, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, and we'll catch you next time.